Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast. We talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny. I hope I didn't fuck up the studio roadblock. And you all know my co-host, Justin. This is my channel and your opinion doesn't matter, bird. And Uncle Bouncy Things Are Magical, Ken. <laughs> This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley-related. Nutsack, the last EDC bag you'll ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, we are christening our new studio and talking down, talking down. Oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> all right, Damn, starting this interview off nice. Yeah, we are sitting down with TJ and Steph the ornery one and the ornery squall before we jump into the interview this saturday so if you're listening to this podcast today it comes out june 22nd is the one two three event where we are celebrating between two wheels first birthday or one year anniversary the second annual honor flight fundraiser for alamo city hog and the third anniversary for the bike and bird youtube channel this will be taking place again this Saturday, June 22nd at Cowboys, Alamo City, Harley-Davidson, here in San Antonio. Woo-hoo. All right. What's going on, y'all? What's up? It's been, it's been a rough fucking week, dude. It, it yeah. has. Oh, man. Man, all my swimming oh, fuck and boating you, dude. and fishing. So I, I have a really good story, mm-hmm. but I feel like I need to wait till the end because, one, hashtag teaser – and two, once they talk about their thing, it's going to give me a segue into my thing. So, <laughs> Oh, all right. Okay. Well, <laughs> TJ and Steph, welcome to the podcast. What's Thank up? Thank you. <laughs> so you guys are in for the Republic of Texas rally, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we rode in last night about 6.30 or so mm-hmm. and uh, grabbed a real shithole for a motel. Nice. <laughs> well, it's Austin, so. Yeah, I yeah. mean, <laughs> <laughs> honestly... We've stayed in a lot worse. It's not that bad, but Steph is always looking at reviews and looking at pictures, and it always, you know, it's a kick in the ass whenever you look at the pictures and then really see the real thing. Yeah, that's your that's yeah. your big mistake yeah. right there. You just got to roll the dice. Yeah, <laughs> but it had a cool Mexican restaurant on the side of it there. I can't pronounce it. Um, that's how sh- you know it's good. Yeah, and yep. the shit was so hot. Yep. I was like, oh, my God. And you know what? The, they'll bring you some hot shit, right? First thing, they bring the chips and, salsa. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and then no water for 15 minutes <laughs> I'm like, and i was starting to choke off right, a little bit tap out white boy <laughs> so yeah anyway we rode in about 6 30 last night um we ate and uh then we hit a couple bars um we kind of did some reviews on that too and like we found the best dive bar in austin and we oh went boy. to it it was a cool place, but I hope that's not the best dog <laughs> bar in Austin because I was a little let down. And Did y'all do Sixth Street at all? No, we're gonna do that tomorrow. Night. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it'll that be gets fucking crazy. Tomorrow. Yeah, I've I've got I've got a nice clean pair of thongs. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been saving those. Got some chaps to go along with them. Well, Steph wears those. Okay. It's, we share chaps. Sure. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. You could chime in any time there. Fiscally responsible. Right there. <laughs> See, people, if they watch the YouTube video of this, they'll be able to actually see her face oh, as she's talking. Yeah. So oh, that, yeah. that's a camera right there. Oh, yeah. oh, my. You know how those work, right? Is, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we did just get a fax machine here in Ar- or up in Arkansas last week. So, so is that a black? Whoa, uh, that's, whoa, that, whoa, 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 whoa. I know you're from Arkansas, <laughs> but you're going to have to tone it down just a tad in Texas. Down here. <laughs> Apologize, African um, American. If, if you would have said one of those blacks, <laughs> one of thing, those but you said a black, that, oof, that was well, aggressive. Um, I'm working on it right now. Uh, <laughs> you gave me some stout beer. I've had half of it, so you'll have to work. You know, yeah, work that, around that's, that. that's the good beer. He's yeah. turning into an arrogant bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed your left needs to go in your left. Oh, oh, I got them backwards. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I told you. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> you got to hold, hold, hold your hands up. Okay. Yeah. It took them all to get them on. It so. did. They were flipped inside out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mom. So, yeah, that's that's a GoPro Hero 5. Is it a 5? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been wanting a 7 because uh, I just want one, but I can't afford it. <laughs> It it fucking hurt. I, I ran my Hero Four Silvers for like two and a half years. I know. <laughs> it it hurts to pull the trigger. Yeah, it really does. And um, you know, we got five kids too. And we're out here running this road, and yep. uh, so everything that we do is on a budget. Sure. And uh, and and it honestly is like when we sat down to go on a trip, we try to spend around fifty dollars a day. 
Jeez. Mm. <laughs> wow. Uh, that doesn't happen all the time, but, I mean, we've gone through days where uh, we didn't spend a damn thing and actually wow. make money. Nice. Yeah. Well, she's got to work the corner a little bit longer that day. Hey. But Do what you got to do. I mean, hey. But we do. Have business. Mm-hmm. We We really do watch... We nickel and dime every trip, and we're watching everything. This trip, we we're getting to enjoy ourselves a little bit more. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're not camping, so. <laughs> no shit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Makes that shitty hotel seem a little bit less shitty, right? <laughs> no shit. The stains all over the place. You're just like, eh, I can look over. Could it. be scorpions. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope it's blood. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. This portion of the interview, and we've changed it up a little bit because Shade Tree Surgeon ripped us a new one <laughs> when we did our last interview. So, oh yeah, no. he called us out for being too generic and boring. So he is a sweetheart of a man. He is. He is <laughs> such a very uplifting. I like cuddling with him. Oh. I just, I just wish he would speak his mind a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like he's, a, he's too tame. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's way too tame. Yeah. I, can, I can totally see him as a cuddler. He's oh a, for sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we get it's um he gets it, that tongue on each side of your earlobe oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you laughing did at? that do something for you there? I, don't know. I don't like Shade that creed <laughs> what the hell man yeah uh definitely a fun dude to hang out with Hopefully all right so we'll get to see that one day so tj where are y'all from so just to help our listeners who may not know you Right. So we are from northwest Arkansas, the Ozark Mountains. We actually live, born and raised in Harrison, Arkansas. Okay. So if Hey, you, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. y'all have. Yeah. Full show. Yeah. <laughs> and had a blast. So, yeah, our neck of the woods is a amazing place to ride. Um, I'm proud of it, and uh, I like to showcase it as much as possible. We do have some good riding. Yes. Yes, you uh, do. <laughs> some of the best riding in, in America, I would yeah. say. Yeah, and it's... Uh, it's a good place. It's not an easy place to make a living, um, but it's where we, you know, that's that's home. But uh, we've got out and rode a lot across the country, uh, enjoyed the hell of it. But I always like going back home. Sure, it's something which we all do. Yeah. yeah. But that's where we're from. So, what got you into riding motorcycles? Oh, uh, Nitro Circus. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> really? That's what <laughs> So was it, fat, was, it, was it Fat Tommy? Yeah. <laughs> so Street Bike Tommy. Street Bike Tommy. Street bike. He's a fat guy. Disrespectful shit. No, no, see, a fat guy can call another fat guy fat without it being disrespectful. I don't, I don't think you can if it's Street Bike Tommy. It's like, it's like when the African Americans use the N-word. Oh, use the N-word. They can't call us crackers. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, Nitro Circus. I'm not touching any of that <laughs> because <laughs> I'm from Harrison, Arkansas. <laughs> so, uh I love everyone. I just want to be clear. Um, <laughs> but just to confirm, since we did bring this subject up, y'all are not actually brother and sister, correct? No, we're cousins. <laughs> cousins. cousins. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> Incest law is a little bit different in Arkansas. But as we yeah. know, in Arkansas, brother and sister and cousins are a lot closer. <laughs> yeah. Than yeah. You would think. That family tree is a lot straighter. <laughs> Real solid trunk. Real solid trunk. <laughs> That's home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so nit- Nitro Circus got you into riding motorcycles. Well, what it was is uh, my son, Kindred Thompson, the boy. We have five kids, like I said earlier, and we have four girls and one boy. That boy and I spent a lot of time together. Uh, me and his mother got separated. and um, So the boy and I watched a lot of Nitro Circus, and one day he was like, Dad, I want a dirt bike. I was like, okay. So that week we went out and got him a dirt bike, then I went and got a dirt bike, and then I built him a little chopper. Mm -hmm. And then I went and uh, found an old bike, and I built me a chopper. So we rode our dirt bikes around and rode our little choppers that we made together around. We actually got called had the cops called on us and we're in the paper we're in the paper together hell yeah <laughs> nice. so, so the Get reason framed. yeah so the reason <laughs> yeah. i ride a motorcycle is because of the boy really in nitro surface so, oh sweet and i haven't rode that long i just started riding when i was 32 and i'm 42 now so, oh wow so a right. decade yeah. yeah that that's longer than justin's been riding yeah, yeah. nope yeah <laughs> yeah i mean nope <laughs> I mean, hell, he, he, he just, just turned he, 24. Yeah. He's look no. At that, <laughs> look at that kid. Can Maybe you, driving on the street for less time, but <laughs> he started off on a dirt bike. So when did you actually get licensed? That same year at 32. Let's see. Do you, do you have was, a license? Not yet. <laughs> I mean, what's that? 
We're in Arkansas. Um, it was probably, I was, um, yeah, 32 is probably six months or so after that. Yeah. Okay. That I got licensed. I had to borrow a Honda Shadow because everything that I built was junk. Sure. And <laughs> nothing had turn signals. You had to jump it to start it. You know, um, I would, uh, everything that I built was around two or three or four hundred dollars. Mm, nice. Until this, when I got to 2015. Yeah. And I was able to run across, we were able to run across the states on that bagger, you know, and enjoy it. So everything that I've ever rode has been shit. And I never rode over 100 miles at a time mm. until, um, you know, about a year ago, whenever I hooked up with Adam Sandoval, oh, wow. we, we rode out to the Laughlin River Run. I'd never rode on a big bike, never rode on a new bike. And uh, it was like 11 o'clock at night. He's like, hey, man, you want to go out to Laughlin with me? We were in Eureka Springs at the Cat House. Mm-hmm. And uh, some shit, real crazy night. <clears throat> and we're all sitting around a table. And he's like, yeah, man, I need somebody to run out there with me, will you? And uh, I was like, I ain't got no money. And I had old uh, Evo Hardtail. I still got it, Maxwell House. And I said, it won't make it. And we had another buddy at the table. He's like, I got a 2017 Road Glide. You take that. And then Adam's Damn. like, Adam's like, I'll uh, throw you some cash if you're right out with me. So that I, I think I said okay about 12 o'clock that night. God. And then um, 11 o'clock that next morning, we're... <laughs> it was <laughs> real. Yeah. He's yeah. got him down. <laughs> So that was my first experience with uh, a big bike and uh, traveling across the United States. What a way to start. Was Steph with you on that trip? No. No. No, I didn't go with him. Actually, I didn't want to go. I was scared. Mm. I really was. I was like, what the fuck? You know, I'm going to get on somebody else's bike and, you know, cut out across, you know, all the way. And the thing of it is, like, I didn't know where Laughlin was. Uh, I actually said okay and I met up with him and then we got to the first hotel that we stayed at and I looked at the weather map to check the weather and then I like zoomed in and zoomed out and I was like damn man we're riding across the United States he's like yeah <laughs> and I was like, so I was scared I didn't really want to go and Steph shoved me out the door really she packed my shit and shoved it over and said you're gonna go she was tired of you yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly well she wanted her boyfriend to be able to have a couple yeah. of days to hang out yeah I seen him pull up when I was leaving yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hey don't forget to lock the gate behind you yeah you son of a bitch well, yeah that's our <laughs> second cousin I mean I've known him for <laughs> Okay, so what was so your first bike was the dirt bike, the the chopper you built. Mm. Uh, your first non built bike was the the Rogue Glide. Yes, sweet. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Rogue Glide, two thousand fifteen Rogue Glide, one hundred and three, and that's the one that we actually got stolen in mm. Daytona. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's coming up later in the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Hashtag tease. Yeah. Tease. Yeah. Uh, help us with the origin story behind the name, the ornery one. Yeah. So, Steph. So, so is yes. it? So, so, hold on. How do you pronounce yeah, it? Yeah, I was gonna say. How do you, how do you say? It? Is it ornery or ornery? Ornery. It's, it's ornery. ornery. Yeah. yeah. You say it like you got fucking marbles yeah. in your mouth. Yeah. Ornery. 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 Or, <laughs> or you could just call me the ordinary one. We had some dude. <laughs> the do a, ordinary. Yeah, one. <laughs> had some dude over. I think it was in Australia or, or somewhere overseas that did a yeah. podcast and did it about <laughs> me and Sandoval, <laughs> and about us doing good in the community and mm-hmm. and he. The and whole was, the whole episode he, you know, oh, he committed to referred it. to him as the ordinary, ordinary. one. <laughs> so he messaged me. I didn't even message him back. It kind of honestly pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it now. It Sorry, dude. Bad. Sorry. When I did the interview with Fast Life, he called me Jason. So yeah, he did. Uh, yeah. All the publications and everything on Instagram. I like, sat down with Jason from Bike and Bird. I was like, ah. <laughs> No, no, you didn't. Yeah. yeah. But anyways. <laughs> All right. So the origin. The origin okay. of the honorary one. Have at it, Mama. That's you, hon. I call her Mama. I obviously know that. Um, so, yeah, you've always been kind of called the honorary one as far as your granny's always called you the honorary one out of all your cousins. I mean, mm. you're he's the only child. Um yeah, so I've just been called ornery ass all my life. I've always been just mischievous and causes and shit, you no. know, and just raising <laughs> a little hell, a little bit wilder than usually whoever's around me, unless shade trees are around me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, 
um yeah just uh so like two years ago she's like you need to instagram and i was like what the hell is instagram and she's like mouth. <laughs> 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 she's like well, it's a sh- social media platform and blah 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 and i was like okay let's set it up and she's like what do you want it to be and i was like oh, i don't know the honorary one and because years before that i had honorary iron so i'm a fabricator on mm-hmm. so honorary iron was there and I, you know, did fabrication and uh, we lost that business, w- which we're going to talk about that here mm. in a little bit. But um, so that had kind of stopped. So I thought, well, we'll just continue with the honor one. But I had like four followers for months and months and months, so it wasn't anything that was just a nickname. Yeah, so it's all right. Roblox had that many for about two years now. So yeah, yeah. nailed it. <laughs> yeah. It's like golf: the lower the score, the better. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I suck at golf. <laughs> oh, my God. I love getting drunk and driving golf carts. Oh, it's the best, isn't it? Yeah, she's, <laughs> she got in trouble when she was younger because she stole the golf cart. Wow. Uh, so we have all – you're kind of ornery too, aren't you? Yeah, but it, you make it sound like it's really, really bad. Like yeah, I stole it like grand theft but, I mean, you, golf cart. Did you, did you pay for it? Did you have no. permission to take it? Yes. Was it over $1,000? He was drunk, though. Who was he? So, the guy that owned the golf cart. Wow. See, I didn't even know this. <laughs> <shit. laughs> oh, the truth So I did out. have permission, but I don't think he remembered giving me permission. But see, you know, the, the laws mm-hmm. say that if you're intoxicated, you can't give consent. So well, does that work with golf carts? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Well, then we're not really married. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we did get married by a pirate. We did get married in a, bar, pirate, so. in a bar in Eureka. Wow. Yeah. It may not have happened. Mm, 11, 11, 11, 11 at night. What the corny <laughs> ass is that? We're corny. That's what we did. I won't forget. But that's why she not. did it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you can see the honor one just kind of comes naturally. It's just a nickname, and it stuck. All right. All right. Well, there you go. So you mentioned uh, kind of your, your trips. Um what are you about and what is your purpose on YouTube? Do those two kind of coincide? Well, I thought about this a lot. Oh boy. And, uh, it's getting deep. Yeah. Like what, what is your mission statement? Like if you had to break it in like three sentences, uh, you, you do know what sentences are, right? I think. Okay. Is that, uh, <laughs> just, just quite, a bunch of words, just the words together inside make, yeah. the space and the period, a yeah. little bit shorter than a paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. A little, yeah. Bit, yeah. A little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, quarter. so um, <laughs> my main thing is for Steph and I to have fun and, mm-hmm. and enjoy our life because of what we've gone through. So what we do is exactly what the fuck we want to do. There you, there go. you go. And we show people what we do. Yeah. I mean, that is it. But with saying that, it gets more complicated, doesn't it? Of course. Oh, yeah. So when you get into it, mm-hmm. you start getting followers and you start getting noticed a little bit. And of course, you want to up your game, sure, mm-hmm. because we're all competitive, or we wouldn't be doing this shit. So, and Steph is very competitive, and she loves this. So that brings us to YouTube. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this brings us to YouTube. So we've always loved documentaries. I love watching documentaries mm-hmm. all my life. Same. So yep. you, you know, we've always talked about doing this and that and something else. So it's kind of our little documentary, and she loves to edit, and she's getting better, and we're, and we're learning as we go. Mm-hmm. Also, let's not kid around a little bit. I mean, or at all, because a few months ago we got monetized, and with being monetized you can make some money oh yes so we need the money to keep us on the road for content yep. so it's not no big crazy like better than now shit it's uh we're just showing what we're doing and we're trying to make a little money so we can show off what we're doing yep yeah but with that being said we do want to do good out here mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. what we're fixing to talk about here in a minute is the reason why is because we can all just ride around without a cause. And we've all done that when we're younger. You know, as I've got older, I was like, man, there's so many people going through shit. And you could bring awareness to what they're going to, you know, mm-hmm. going through. Um, and for us, it, does, it could be anything. You know, we're, we're just, um, we're very open to 
like-minded and happy people. Yep. And that's what we want to surround ourselves with. I heard you say something at the uh, when we were eating at Brick Oven that really stuck with me. Yeah. Um, you were talking to the gentleman from Wright, Arkansas, and he was he was telling you about some type of complication. And the whole time he was talking to you, you were smiling. Mm-hmm. And you said, it'll work itself out because when you surround yourself with good people, it always does. It does, yeah. And that yeah. fucking stuck with me. Yeah, it really does. One because, way or another, will, yeah. Because people say, oh, it'll all work out when really in reality that's not always the truth. Yeah, and they just pretty much want to tell you something to make their stuff better or yeah. feel better and then just get on with the conversation. Yeah, but you adding that little extra bit to it, I was like, wow, that, yeah. that fucking hit. Well, and um, listen, I mean, guys, we've only got – this is going to get all, like, heavy. But honestly, we only have so much time. Yep. And we only have so much time that we feel good Mm -hmm. or we are dedicated to what we're doing right now. Yeah. So let's just make the most of it. Let's not hang around a bunch of assholes. Um, Well. Or let's (laughs) just say ego. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because the three of us were assholes. Oh, no no doubt. I was like, "Mm, we got to go over here and do this shit. I told Steph, I was like, I don't want to go. And she's like, you've got to go. You told me. You said you'd go. (laughs) You'd go. So you you felt like it was going to be like the white privilege version of the movie Get Out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's, yeah, white collar businessman invites a couple from Arkansas into his house. <laughs> Coming this summer, yeah. and there was no banjos at all. No, we, have, we, have, we have guitars here. Oh, yeah. geez, yeah, not banjos. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I guess let's rephrase rephrase that. Then what we want to do is um, be around people we enjoy and that um, help you do what you need to do. And we help each other. I yep. mean. Um, We've talked about that a lot within our group. That's yeah. why some have come and some have gone because when one person is is re- pretty much relying on the group, that drags the group down. When they're only oh, yeah. focused on themselves, it's just it's cancer to the to the whole group. That's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. At, at the end of the day, you know, like our the OG crew yeah. that we have, everyone brings something yes. to it, and we benefit from the the family environment that we have and all of us benefit and as soon as someone i'm not going to mention names donnie comes in (laughs) and doesn't provide any benefit to the rest of the group and only accepts the benefits yeah that's when things get i can't do it because it it creates static Mm -hmm. and again we're all assholes as it is oh absolutely so if you add oh, yeah. static to that then we become bigger assholes oh, yeah. and it's never fun yeah but it's oh, not yeah. the fun type of asshole yeah. it's not the, the asshole that you want to hang out with <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I kind of have fun when i do it <laughs> oh you definitely do and yeah. you look good doing it <laughs> <laughs> jesus look at that man me <laughs> i'm gonna turn the cameras off real quick yeah <laughs> no no you're that or change websites that we're streaming that on because <laughs> talking about monetization <laughs> jesus <laughs> I didn't know what that was until a few months ago. Well, <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm not good enough yet to uh, be monetized. Right? You're good enough for me. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> According to Justin, I have to get better. Yeah, get better. Hey, I know. I hey, had the same shit from over there. Bring up the group. Do we not just talk about that? <laughs> yeah. Bring you up. That's what I'm here for. All right. So let's let's go into a little bit of a deeper topic here. Tell us about Steph and what was it that caused you guys to kind of change your outlook on life or, or Steph can tell that I mean yeah. she is right there yeah you do know that right she's yes in the room. when okay. I wrote this I didn't know she was actually going to be in the room with us <laughs> tell us about this person that's sitting right here that can obviously speak English <laughs> it's, it's your call yeah um, I'm, I'm just like totally lost now so um, yeah I had a complication I guess you could say um I had a brain tumor five years ago had um emergency brain surgery we found out on a Thursday had emergency surgery on Monday and um was really faced with um a 50 50 percent chance um we could either do surgery and have the tumor removed do radiation um slowly kill you yes it would just slowly burn you up um, or leave leave the tumor in there and then just deal with consequences. And at this point, it was sitting on top of my spinal cord, so it was cutting out circulation to my mm. arms and legs. Yeah, so it was in her fourth ventricle. <clears throat> so what they had to do is uh, cut a plug out in her skull, go in and split the cell cerebellum, mm-hmm. the two lobes on your 
bottom of your brain. They split that, and they went in there, and they got a tumor out about the size of a marble, mm-hmm. a little smaller. <clears throat> so it was sitting on top of our spinal cord, so it wouldn't let the flow of spinal fluid uh, circulate. So no, I to pass out. Yeah, so she was um, she was dying in front of us, and mm-hmm. uh, we she we just thought she's sick. Yeah. You know? and yeah. Then, so you know, uh, there's nothing like having the love of your life sit across from you, and the doctor walk in and say, "Listen, you got a brain tumor." You, uh, if you're gonna die, you could die any moment. You are dying. Um, we can leave it in. You're gonna die. Shoot you with radiation. It'll slowly kill you. Or three, we'll take it out, and you get a fifty-fifty chance of living, and you will have complications. So, Oof. so we, of course, were like, take it out. So she was so brave. Um, so it, uh, it's weird because. As we went through this, and I sat beside her, and uh, we sat up there at the hospital for days and days, and she had complications after that, and we worked our way through it. Um, uh, afterwards, it uh, changed me because I had to ask for forgiveness for her because I came with a term that she may die Mm -hmm. and I had to be okay with that because I had to continue on so I could take care of the kids Mm -hmm. so later on I said you're gonna have to forgive me because I already I thought well you die I'm I'm still gonna be around I gotta be okay but in uh, this all the sadness and all this shit I you know stayed home from work for eight months we got back up on our feet and we started working really hard and got in the gym and started really motivating she started coming around and like, she got better and she got better. We lost every fucking thing we had though in the meantime. So we had, it was like a tornado just yeah. circling around us and we're mm-hmm. all we're worried about is trying to get her better, which we did. As you can see now, she's she still deals with complications. Um, but that led us to the point to where we could do what we're doing now. We can ride, we can go goof off. The kids have got older now and uh, we're, we're, we're free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're free. So, um, and we have a really big passion about women riders mm-hmm. because Steph can't ride by herself, which we talked about yeah. this. Yeah. Um, I didn't hear about this. So, she, we bought her a little 400 Yamaha and uh, we got it going. She was riding around town before the brain tumor. And then after that, her equilibrium is off. Yeah. So, there's no way she can ride. Um, so, it's always two up which I love. I wouldn't have it any other way. But we have a really uh, a really strong compassion for women that ride because she can't. Sure. And so I'll just be real fucking honest with you. She likes riding more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that? No. Yes. So the reason, and I say this a lot, the honorary one is because of her. Mm-hmm. I'm just a dude with a beard that's riding a bike that's letting her enjoy you're the puppet. Yep. The front man. Yeah. Yep. yep. So that's kind of, you know, it's kind of how everything's played out. It's a little bit more complicated, more detailed, but in a, in a nutshell, that's. It's kind of funny that someone else said that you're a puppet the other day. Yeah. So <laughs> fucking funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, so I'm, I'm always the person to, to, to pry the questions. Does that story get easier or is it just as painful as day one? No. I think it gets worse. Really? Mm-hmm. No, um, for Steph, for me, I think I'm struggling with, uh, I'm struggling with shit um, daily from it. Um, I think it's, it's changed me. You know, mm-hmm. It's it's for the good, but uh, no, it's rough. No, I can, I can relate. Yeah. I can't even rough. imagine. I'm so far se- separated. I'm I'm trying to empathize so bad, yeah. but it's literally it's to that point where it's it's hard to even no, yeah. you know. I mean, imagine. I mean, I, I can yeah. relate, you know. I mean, my father he had pancreatic cancer and you, know, I, you don't recover from that. You know, I right. watched, watched him die. And then my mother had heart complications and open heart surgery, like emergency. Like she wasn't feeling good, go to the hospital and they're like, "You're having surgery. We're going to we're going you're having open heart surgery right now." Yeah, you have no time to go home and think about it yeah, and they, comprehend it. And yeah, like, they give you they, they and literally they just lay it out there. You have these are your options. You have to choose right now. Yeah. Oh god. 
and it yeah. it's making me sick thinking about it well the good thing about this though is because it doesn't give you enough time to flip out yeah because we found out right before halloween and we actually went home that weekend and got the kids all ready for halloween and dressing them up so we didn't have time to flip out and but the little shit did get online and started looking up youtube videos and uh, that was this thing they said don't do don't, don't, nope. yeah. yeah so we i'll do the same thing yeah i'll do the exact oh, every, same everyone thing everyone does it mm-hmm. everyone does it yeah so uh it's um uh, but she is tough as nails um i mean if uh i i've been so lucky uh yeah. It's just better. Oh, we know you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, they can all see you and know you're yeah, lucky. It's, it's, been a, it's been a hell of a ride, and it's going to continue to be a hell of a ride. Um, we're moving, and we're going to stay moving, and uh, we're going to enjoy the shit out of ourselves until we change our mind and do something else. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. I life. hate that it fucking happened, but if, if it did have to happen, I'm glad it made all of our paths cross. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing we always say is it was – truly a blessing in disguise yep. yeah we don't it, like to say that too much because people are like oh. yeah it's kind of cliche cliche yeah. it is yeah. but if it had not have happened mm-hmm. i would still be yep. with the company that i was with fedex you can s- <laughs> no you can say it you can say yeah. it oh, totally. no, they don't Fed- sponsor us all right yeah. fedex i mean she was struggling with all this shit they wouldn't give her no time off and then when we did find out that it was a tumor we had to get emergency brain surgery with first person, the best person we could find. Well, it was out of network. We got stuck with 78% of the, no, yeah, 78% of the bill Fuck. because it was out of network. We couldn't change. the. They called us like that Friday and was like, well, it's out of network. And I was like, dude, we're doing surgery mm-hmm. Monday. We mm-hmm. have to. So we don't have time for that shit. Then after she got our tumor out, like we were needing money bad. So she tried to go back to work. She couldn't. She had complications. Yeah. So basically, what did they call it? Um, so because I'd ran out of FMLA, I went back. I couldn't do it. The surgeon hadn't even released me to go back to work yet. Um, but they wouldn't let me reapply for FMLA or short-term disability because I didn't have a need anymore. The I didn't tumor have a tumor gone. there. It was already gone. So it was um, Goddamn God voluntary damn. termination. She lost her job. They fired her, lost all of her benefits. And then I was self-employed. Of course, I worked in fabrication. And while I was off, I'd lost all my jobs. Yep, sure. So we hit a roadblock. <laughs> So Walk so is Justin. Yeah. Yeah. He's hit a roadblock too. <laughs> Damn sure it did. <laughs> Their sounds a tad bit more expensive than mine was. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, I mean, um, I think the last bill that we know, uh, it was like I think uh, we owe over three hundred thousand. Yeah, as we sit right now, which wow, we can't. There's no way we. Can pay. If you don't mind me asking, do you know the total at the beginning, or has it just been so snowballing it's, it's hard to keep track of? It's been snowballing, but yeah. then of course you have the hospital bill, the surgeon, the anesthesiologist, oh, the God. physical therapy, the neurologist specialist, the neurology um, institute. So, I mean, it's quickly like one problem, one surgery, but yeah. then there's like a dozen. Oh yeah, you charge like thirty five dollars for a band aid. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. off. Yeah. 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 So. so, but we're as. Americans or as a nation, however you want to look at it, we're all struggling with the same damn problem. Yep. Oh, and yep. basically, don't get sick because if you do, you're, you're fucked. fucked. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. And here we are riding a damn motorcycle across yeah. the United. You, know, you know, so and and, <laughs> and that itself is like a big responsibility. Yep. Like she's gone through this shit, and I've got her on the back with me all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just like, honey, do you really? She goes, yeah. But like I said, she loves it. So yeah. Yeah. Here we are. We're blasting across, and every day you've got these assholes turning out in front of you and on our cell phones, and we're taking a risk every fucking time we throw our leg over that bike. But she yeah. absolutely, I love it too, but she loves it more than I. And right. as she loves it so much, I love it more. Yeah. You know? That's kind of what happened to uh, Sam from one of our local Harley dealers. He uh, had to have emergency neck surgery, oh. and when he scheduled the surgery, it was in network. They switched the network between when he planned the surgery and when it actually happened, 0% was covered. It was like a $700,000 bill. Yeah. That's rough. Bro, yeah. I would, I'd set some buildings on fire. And that's how you feel. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then you realize oh, yeah. that it's not going to help anything and you're just a cog in a very large machine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. So let's, 
let's shift gears slightly and go from oh, nice i said like, cogs and you said yeah, gears. Yeah, i like that man yeah. good that's job like i know what i'm doing or something super cute <laughs> almost <laughs> yeah almost let's not go too far so let's go from kind of the sad yes. thing that has turned out to be a good thing tell us about the concept or your concept of pay it forward and what you guys have been doing for this well okay so everything that we've gone through we've had a lot uh well we went through we had a lot of people help us Mm -hmm. and it wasn't really uh, friends because friends kind of disappeared yeah and it was more community Mm -hmm. that helped us people we didn't know but still in our community so our pay it forward is well we go to a community we do a pay it forward and the community tells us uh, about someone in their community that needs a hand up. Mm-hmm. So with doing that, we raise the money for them and bring awareness to them to help their situation. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter uh, male, female, family, um, if you've served or anything like that. It doesn't matter with us because it's just straight up human connection Mm -hmm. and we're just trying to help our fellow human out sure yeah so that's so i like that you you called it a a hand up and not a a hand out out. yeah Yeah. you read my mind you bastard Mm -hmm. y'all mind readers it's almost like nobody's doing yeah Yeah. it's it's different because handouts are expected and and a hand up to it Yeah. yeah a hand up they didn't expect this from you they they didn't ask you for it someone told you about someone else mm-hmm. and you just help out yeah it, and a lot of us uh for most of us we don't want handouts we want to hand up so we can move it forward exactly mm-hmm. yeah and then we don't like leave me alone i'm independent i'm just going through a rough time yeah we just need a little help some you know from oh moment to moment. yeah I don't know about that. <laughs> I heard on Live PD the other day, this guy, uh, they had a call for a mentally challenged guy that had gone missing. And uh, they found him, and he was he was semi-cognizant, and the cop just showed so much compassion. He said, a saying I love, he said, not every day is going to be a good day. Everyone has a bad day every now and then, and that's okay. I was like, yep. damn. Yes. And it's okay to go through hard times. Yeah. You know, but there are some people out there that's always going through a hard time, though. Yep. So those people in like, so the, we have people actually send in nominees. So we go through these nominees and we pick out one person, which is a nightmare itself. Oh, God, hear, I couldn't imagine doing that. You hear all kinds of crazy stories. It's a very emotional toll. It, yep. Or you might hear somebody say, hey, will you help me for housing for college? I mean, you have this range mm-hmm. of crazy yeah. shit. Yeah, handouts but, versus a hand up. Yeah. yeah. But so, you know, you, um, hmm, it's a hell of a process that we go through, isn't it? It is. And you guys build a team yeah. to assist y'all uh, for each one of these, or is it pretty much the same team each time? How does that work? So, a couple of our pay it forwards last year, mm-hmm. we had um, two married couples that helped us, and they're actually on our team on a couple of pay it forwards for this year. Right. So, it's both. I mean, there's a couple of them that we've that are great. They they know how we operate. organize it, how we operate it, and they're familiar and they're willing to stick around for pay it forwards this year. Yeah, and we're getting to the point now where we need help because we can't do it yeah. all. Mm-hmm. And I and the thing of it is, you you reach a point for us. We've reached a point where we don't want to neglect anybody. Yeah. Um. So we have to have some help. Um. But it's touchy who you get the help because you're honestly representing my brand sure oh, our yeah. brand the honorary one so yeah we have to put a team together in because you can't uh carry all that weight around no no no, no. 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 It's yeah, i get that it's heavy it's kind of like for us with project clean slate it not one of us could do it it takes all three of us we have people who are really good at figuring shit out we have really good people who can build a motorcycle. I know it's just bolting parts on, but that's building a motorcycle. It looks good doing it as well. Ah, yeah. Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you've seen his concept drawings, I'm sure, on the Bike and Bird channel. He, he's amazing at it. And then then there's just me who just talks. So mm. it's yeah, it's a team effort. <laughs> but that works, though, because yeah. there was a famous businessman. He said, I could run the most successful chicken farm, even though I know zero things about chicken, because 
my team would be the experts in chicken farming. That's, That's right. all you need. Yeah. 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 Just it's you're exactly right because it's so important to have those people around you that support you. Yeah. And what y'all are fixing to do is going to be pretty badass. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm like, I'm kind of excited to see what bike y'all get. I mean, us too. We are too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, y'all got something cool going right there, and it's going to be it's it's it it will fix some shit that's wrong with y'all. Oh yeah. Because there, we all have emotional bullshit. Whenever you do something for somebody, it's the most selfish thing you yep. can ever do. Oh, yeah. Because yep. you help yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. contagious. It's the good shit. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's let's take a break, hear from Nutsack, and then come back for our second round of questions. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today and we are back with the ordering one and the ornery squaw so i'm gonna kick it is over that a question no. is she, was she? Is she here yeah. <laughs> well, are we talking like this there is video evidence that she is here <laughs> everything is going to end with a question mark <laughs> it's like i'm canadian eh? Hey. Hey. i'm not your buddy guy <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kick it over to Justin to start this round of our interrogation. I mean, questions for you. So this is actually something I've never done, so I'd be curious to see your answer. But what is a tip for riding long distances with a passenger? Get the right fucking passenger. (laughs) Damn, that. (laughs) Yes. So kids like, let's let's ask Steph this question. What are some things that you do as a passenger – to, that helps him while you guys are to going not fuck with him. coast to coast. Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring a bungee cord. No. Um, I would say just, um, you know, this sounds so cheesy and corny, but you have to really feel not only the rider, driver, whatever you call them, but the bike too. So mm-hmm. I think just being aware of your surroundings and, you know, be a um, just be aware as being a passenger that, he has your weight also if you move the wrong way or if you shift the wrong way it can mess him up and um can we get this audio clipped for our wives please yeah yes okay yeah. thank you <laughs> and honestly guys i shit you not i don't know she's back there i really wow. don't know she's back there and when she gets off the back it feels odd to me. Mm-hmm. I'm so used to it's her like being super light because yeah. I'm like yeah. 210 pounds. Yeah, and then we're we're loaded too. And then whenever everything's off and I go to kick it off the kickstand, I'm like, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. just dump it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Wait. Um, but yeah, so that's another thing that we're gonna start talking about a little bit more is two up mm-hmm. yeah. because she has a voice. And there's a lot of ladies out there that ride behind their man um, or or woman. woman. It's 2019. Come on now. Nailed it. (laughs) Um, So, you know, they they have a voice, too. And it's uh, I wouldn't have it any other way, man, because we have all these moments that nobody ever know about. We have Mm -hmm. we have these uh, smells and. The yeah. especially I, crossing into Arkansas. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Th- th- those There's, were different smells. <laughs> I didn't enjoy those smells. Well, well, coming from Missouri down, that's the smell of fresh air. Yeah, and honeysuckle or whatever else Tracy came up with. I mean, we don't. Sn- you smell our air here in San Antonio. It smells like ass. Well, yeah. Well, you should come into Arkansas from the east side. Oh, Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff. Paper. 
Uh, it it smells like a porta potty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some water porta potty. One large porta potty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Paper, oh. paper mills are nasty. Jesus. Yeah. We were rolling down here in this Prius. <clears throat> Prius. I don't know. I'm always watching out for Prius. Yes. This Prius is like came up beside us, past us, ripped over in front of us, and hit a, well, it was a skunk. Oh, <laughs> so shit. the skunk flipped. So I missed it, but it busted its stink bag. <sighs> and we, it got on us. And I mean, we rode for a long time. Freaking Priuses. They're saving the world. I get it. But when they're running 80 I think it's or pre I. Pre I. Pre I. Yeah, this is plural. And they're always white. I mean, the ones that the I drivers? see always <laughs> <laughs> the car, man. <laughs> Damn wow. It. Well, they're the, always white. Well, see, they're always <laughs> white. See, the Prius, the Prius they're, not, they're not saving the world. You know, those lithium yeah. batteries that they have in the back of their car. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> and then once they get over a certain speed, you're doing all fuel anyway, right? I yeah. can only hope that the driver of that Prius that hit the skunk was like an ultra mega vegan, and they went home and cried into oh, their yeah. soy paper sheets that night. Yes, right. Yeah. They were pretty heavily into their social media. At the moment. Um, how else are they going to tell everyone that they're vegan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their code is bumper stickers. You could put a <laughs> bumper sticker or you could tweet about it. Well, what's going to what's gonna reach more people? Tweet. <laughs> <laughs> All so. right. So uh, I, we almost, when I say we, me and my wife almost had our first motorcycle trip the other weekend. But she hurt her back and she bitched out last second. But I'm kind of glad we did because the heat index was never below 110 Ooh. that entire weekend. So dodged a bullet there. But That's rough. When you are packing for a trip, what are three things that you never leave without besides those pants and that shirt? Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Right. And these are wore out. Um, are they? I think I got, <laughs> yeah, some, life, I think I got some life left in them, man. You're good. <laughs> Dude, I there got, is 1% denim left on that jean. <laughs> I have new underwear on. <laughs> so, yeah. Just yeah. the fact that he has underwear on, period, <laughs> is good enough. <laughs> yeah. I I have to have underwear, apparently. So, I'm really Laws. thinking. I'm re- yeah. <laughs> Indecent not, exposure. Not in Arkansas anymore. <laughs> um, so one thing I always take is I have a knife that's been built for me by TD Tactical, and he's actually from Texas here. Um, that's always on me, and I, I love that knife. He built it to what I wanted, mm-hmm. and it runs with my belt, and it's small, and it just tucks in. You can't see it, you never, and I use it all the damn time. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that I have learned that I need mm-hmm. is a DGI Pocket Osmos. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that, oh, yeah. The camera. That, that little camera. That little camera you had. Yeah, so that thing, I can flip that out, and it's in my pocket all the time, and I can get a lot of footage, you know, just here and there. That thing is super handy. And something else, what would you say? Say our tool roll. Yeah. 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 And, you know, like the tool roll that we carry, it's, um, if you've seen it, it's it's pretty massive. I mean, it holds a lot of shit. It's nine pounds. It's freaking awesome. I'm so jealous of it. It's not just like what you may need but you know there's other stuff like you may see a bike on the side of the road i just say because you know how much work do you have to do on a brand new bike yeah not much (laughs) but we're usually running with assholes that have pieces of shit that they and they can't they don't carry anything because i've always rode on junk so i and i feel like i need those tools on I get little uh, ass on it. Your your comfort blanket. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when we did do the we got the brand new bike and then the first time we sat on it we rode out to Laughlin and did the iron butt. Yeah, we did. And we we were like thirty miles out and his phone holder is like shaking (laughs) like (laughs) looks like it's fixing to just fall off. So we did actually need our tools for a brand new bike. And I took off the uh, heel shifter. I Mm -hmm. take that off. A couple things we need to tighten up. Mm -hmm. Um so that tool row, uh, and that's a, I just real quick. That is Grim Parts Company. They've got a badass tool row. They got a small one. I think it's called Single Track, and then the other one's bigger. I'm not sure the name of it, but that tool row is a good piece of uh, good piece of equipment to have, and uh, it's on our box constantly. All right. Well, we'll get a link from you and put it yeah. in our show notes. Yeah. Our our listeners can go check yeah. that out. Yeah, it's it's a it's, it's really solid. cool. Yeah, it's a solid piece. Um, yeah, so, and then I know we didn't say a fourth one, but we always take baby wipes. Oh, yeah. yeah. You need baby wipes. Yeah. Gotta hate baby wipes. Yeah. What, you're well, the scent, or do you just hate them? It's the scent. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, I have to have unscented ones. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 so that that R- was Roblox with me on this one with a lot of a lot of intimate time with baby wipes in the military. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I didn't know. So both of y'all were in the military. Yeah. Right. He, he was the Navy. I was in the Air Force. Air Force. Okay. I am going to be getting an Air Force flag for him. Right. And then I'm going to Pride flag for Justin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is Pride Month. It is Pride Month. Wow. I support you. And <laughs> we'll get a we'll get a ginger one. <clears throat> National Kick a Ginger Day. Yes. They have fucking flags for that. Oh, they, they will. T- t- hey, you can like get anything. Made. It's like Rule Thirty Four, man. Like, there's always something for everything. Get you a coffee mug. Get something for y'all right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when you guys are, you know, loading up and heading out, how do you plan your routes? Are y'all doing the typical GPS, or are y'all just okay? We we are heading west, so we're just gonna go west and see what where the road takes us. Well, that's kind of funny that you. It's it kind of depends. Like our shoestring budget road trip that we did last year we went to cleveland ohio over to surges and then back down and that trip was general i mean it was just strictly designed to hit those two areas but everywhere in between was where our followers or fans or friends were because that's how we saved money we stayed with them or we camped yeah so a lot of it dictates on how cheap we can run Sure. So, like, on that trip, like, anybody that were friends of us online, they put us up. So, we saved money there. So, that kind of tells us where we're going to go, and that will lead you to places you don't want to go. Or that, that's pretty bold. I got it, was, friends. it was a big thing. <laughs> Dude, no. guys, I've, we've got some fucked up shit I mean, that's happened. And the majority, though, the majority of everyone that we stayed with was awesome still friends We're today cool. yeah you know? and uh there's but we d- we have gotten some situations you know because did, did you, did you did wake you up just, with some guy in his tidy waddies over you just, just breathing heavily i yeah. wish he had tidy waddies on <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> did he look oh, at y'all man. and think okay they're probably swingers so we can we can make a party out of this no i think he was just into me i mean i don't know what he was, he made a lot of eye contact and uh he was uh wanting <laughs> Uh, he, he was intent on feeding me cheeseburgers and hanging out and, uh, you know, pitching a tent. <laughs> well, you do realize I asked you to stay at my house. I didn't know she was coming with you. But oh, wow. <laughs> Things just what? got interesting. What? <laughs> yeah, you've already unpacked the bike. <laughs> hey, you're here. You want some cheeseburgers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to BJ's later. And I, he I wasn't w- talking about the restaurant. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> Oh. We'll talk about that off camera because yeah. I don't know if we could go into that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, other than that, we, we generally um, organize our route to be the quickest, fastest, cheapest. cheapest. Yeah. Uh, but they're here lately. We're starting, which we enjoy getting off the road mm-hmm. um, and poking around these little towns and seeing what we find. Sure. But we like running fast. Yeah, like we that road glide you want to run 80 85 miles an hour it's we, not hard nope. yeah and it's comfortable and we like to move and then when we get tired of that we kick off and we'll find some kind of little square or yeah. somewhere to eat or swing by and see some family that are here and there mm-hmm. um, so it's always changing and yeah. our schedule changes from hour to hour <laughs> we do what the fuck we want to do yeah and if one morning we uh, this so we go to rallies and if we don't like the rally we may be there for three days we may only stay one day and mm-hmm. we're gone. Well, yeah, I mean, y- you know, if so you're not having a good time, why stay? You're, you're only beholden to yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yeah. I don't know, and it's something about a motorcycle that makes you feel free. I yeah, don't know yeah. what it is. I've heard it that. Just, yep. It just makes that. you like it. You just want to flip the world off and say suck it yep. yeah. as you're riding. But or fuck you, buddy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, d- I know when I was in the Navy, I had a bunch of leave booked up, and I ended up riding around Europe for 30 days. What? And I couch surfed. That's pretty neat. And luckily I was single because I could get away with a lot of the stuff that went on. But, but yeah, couch surfing. I went to Paris and didn't see the Louvre, didn't go to the Eiffel Tower, went to all these – what tourists would look at as really shady looking back alleys the best place some of the most amazing food and i i don't drink wine so they all kind of stuck their nose up at me for Mm. that but amazing food just awesome 
scenery that you don't see as a tourist because it's only where the locals what the locals know yeah and you said something right there you know being able to get to know that's one thing about people that uh, we're friends with i hate saying followers online because none of us are followers our friends online um they know the location mm-hmm. so they'll they'll like come hang out with us and then they'll take us somewhere where yep. we wouldn't go but you have to be open and put yourself out there for those bad experiences but the good experiences will outweigh the yeah the bad shit that's badass well also was very well armed the <laughs> entire trip so i thought you we were going to say very well hung I didn't know where you were going to go <laughs> no, with that. So I was like, we'll get to that later. Look at this. Look at this. No. We'll get to that later. Those armbands are our measurement from the pit to the edge of that right there. Yeah, yeah. That. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's the width. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Other Ooh. sides of the girth. They're actually not that, that yeah. even. Well, uh, learn something. We can, we'll measure that out later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> totally. He's yeah. going to go from the wrist up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we use centimeters, so it sounds really big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> millimeters uh, millimeters, millimeters. <laughs> let's get this shit right um all right so you guys go to a bunch of events and things each year where are y'all going uh, for the remainder of this year okay so we're down here for the raw rally and then when we leave here we'll go home for a week and a half two weeks or maybe and then we're going to kentucky for little sturges mm-hmm. um, i didn't know that was yeah, a thing i didn't know that was a thing yeah it's supposed to be pretty rowdy. It's like 21 and above. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of these rallies that we go to, we get footage that I oh, can't yeah. use. Mm-hmm. You know, but no. I no. can I can use. Later, yeah. you know? <laughs> what you do is you make two different versions and then Patreon. There you go. Yeah, uh, right. doesn't need to be monetized. No joke. And our Patreons are – and that is a hell of an idea. I, some of My them, idea. I yeah, call uh, it 10% uh, royalties. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> Check is there. Um so yeah so we're gonna do that and uh we've got some events coming up around home uh jack daniels freedom run um and then of course we'll be going to sturges Mm -hmm. and we'll be doing a pay it forward at sturges with law tiger sin is going to be there we'll be on the strip uh so we're in the works right now doing a pay it forward starting everything rolling um and then uh We've got a couple other things. On yeah, we have a lot of stuff around our home area. Yeah. Um, Springfield and um, a lot throughout Arkansas. Of course, Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue, um, Biketoberfest in Daytona, mm-hmm. um, music, mountains, and motorcycles. Yeah. We've never been there before, so I'm looking forward to that. Right. That's over in Mountain View, Arkansas. Um, Thunder Rally, yep. Mountain Home. Um, we try to do a lot around home because we are teamed up with Denny's Harley Davidson there in Springfield, and mm-hmm. they'll have Hog for Dogs. They do a lot of cool stuff up yeah. there. Um, so we really try to support our community because they're, they're supporting community. us. Yeah. yeah. So. And then we do have our rally at home, yeah. which is Ride the Ozarks. Ride the Ozarks, absolutely. October 11th, and mm-hmm. 12th. Yep. Sounds yeah. cold. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be. I'm doing two rallies in October. Don't give me that fucking side eye. <laughs> It's going to be getting there. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I think in, like, the road glide right now, we're about 5,500 miles on it now. Jesus. So we, we're – I am really would like to get around 25,000 on it this year or 30. So – Well, we were we were first estimating about 25 – 20 to 25,000 miles this year, which we already did Daytona. But then that was on a different bike. Yeah. So oh, on this yeah. bike, we lost some miles. So, yeah. so let's let's, let's actually, actually our next question. Go into that. <laughs> yeah, great segue. Yeah. Um, tell us what happened at Daytona and the aftermath from that. Okay. So, oh man. <laughs> still set close. set the scene. Set the scene. What are we looking at? So, we have some really close friends that are down there, um, and we hang out and we just ride around and we were getting we went down there for biketoberfest so then we went back down for bike week mm-hmm. and uh we we're just hanging out there's a gas station down at the end of the strip there called the rue and that's where everybody goes shows off their systems it's more you know big baggers big wheels systems and we just have that we had that 2015 
road glide. Mm-hmm. And everybody pulled in there. Well, we didn't really fit in there. And I was like, I'm not going to park our bike here. It's kind of weird. You These know? are like some big builds. Like yeah. Massive, like massive. A lot yeah. of money. Yeah. Yeah. Front wheels. A lot of yeah. fucking so, money. And we got to know Corey Sosa and he built some stuff. So we're actually following Corey around yeah. and he's talking to all these people. We don't really know them all. So we just kind of j- zip down about a block away at the Snowbird Cafe. <laughs> and that's on the right side if we're going out of the strip there. And then uh, next to it is a bridge. Mm-hmm. And then it you know goes on over and you're just off the strip. So we parked our bike there at that restaurant. We get off the bike, went up and had one beer and talked to everybody and looked at the bikes, walked over to another bar, was going to get a beer, but I was just, I was honestly just wore out and tired. And I was like, hell, let's just go back to the tent and chill. So we walked back down and our fucking bike was gone. (laughs) So, and it's still so weird. And I walked up and I was like, Steph, our bike's gone. And she's like, I told you I didn't want to park here. You oh, could have, oh, there she, it is. She's oh, like, damn. you could have parked across the road, paid five bucks. And oh, I was like, I no. didn't want to pay five bucks. That's cheap ass, right? I really did. When we pulled up, I was like, I really don't feel comfortable parking here. And it wasn't so much like, it wasn't super shady. It was a restaurant. There mm. was tons of other bikes. There was people walking around. I mean, we were at the end of the strip. And we're in the middle of freaking Daytona Bike Week. Perfect place. Yep. Yep. Get your bike in plain sight. There yep. you go. But we did have to leave our helmets on the bike. And I, I was just like, oh. oh. I hate doing that. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I walked up to the parking lo- spot and I was like, our bike's gone. She's like, no, it's on the outside of that van. I was like, okay. So I went and looked over there. It wasn't there. I was like, our bike's stolen. So we, I went and talked to the owners and they're like, we don't tow during Bike Week. And he didn't really want to talk to me. And I was like, okay, I'm bother, you know, I'm bothering him. So I walked back out and I told Steph, I said, call the tow company, which she was already on the phone. They hadn't had any police call anything in to be towed. They haven't towed anything at that time. So I was like, our bike is stolen. So she calls the police officers in about 15 minutes. One shows up, a younger wow, officer. Good time. Yeah, and we just fill out the report. And, and and while that's going on, I told Steph, I said, let's just go live on YouTube let's just show this uh so that's what we did we just took the moment and i told her i said we're gonna take this negative and make a positive out of it we're just gonna and we did we totally did and uh so sorry to cut you out was that your composed reaction or were you extremely pissed and then just got to that he's more of a um when it happens he's cool and he can think over it like think about it and think through it but then he'll sleep, and then he'll wake up. He's pissed. Mm. He's like, yeah. "Why?" While well, like I'm the opposite, and it yeah. happens. I'm like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then I'm calm. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what happened. And mm-hmm. plus, I found out, you know, we had some stuff in the saddlebag, like my grandpa's hatchet was in yeah. there that I carried for miles. Well, I didn't realize that mm. at the moment, but we slept on it. When I woke up the next morning, I was pissed. I was like. This whole bike shit, us riding around um, and putting ourselves out there, and we had some negativity come back toward us too. Like we had people say that we're frauds, and we had our bike stolen, and it was insurance insurance fraud. Yeah, insurance fraud. And trust me, it wasn't um, because at the end of the day, we lost eight thousand dollars on the bike. Um, but luckily, like we have a ton of people that love us. And we had a lot of support. Uh, actually, we went live the next day to give everybody an update. And uh, Law Tiger, they were following us. Lionel, uh, he calls us. And he's like, hey, man, how are you getting home? And I was like, <laughs> we don't know because we rode a bike down, which I, we were going to figure it out. He's like, we're going to fly you home. So actually, Law Tiger flew us home. So we get home, and then we go. We had Geico for our insurance. We do not have Geico now, and I'll <laughs> never have Geico again because it was a nightmare. Six weeks later, uh, we ooh. get a check, and but we don't have enough to get a new bike. And luckily, um, we had some people, you know, basically give us a hand up. So Bikers Against Bullies, which uh, is Corey Sosa, he was putting on a no class show down there. Uh, they actually we they raised two thousand dollars for us while we were down there. Nice. Wow. Um, and then our first pay it forward 
um, which was a young lady that had a premature baby, and we only gave her 200 bucks and some uh, uh, tickets and just and vouchers, and vouchers and stuff around town. It was our was. first pay it forward. She did a GoFundMe, and it raised right at 2000 Wow. Um, and then we, we just had people, like, really help us out where we could put a down payment on this t- new 2019 Rogue Lot special. And then Denny's, of course, they really worked with us. So this big chain of events unfolded because we put it out there. But we took some kicks in the nuts. Oh, for sure. The whole thing, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but, you but know, it's happen as soon as, like, the second Justin posts a video, it has, like, six or seven thumbs down. Yeah. Every oh, time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's there's just those people out there who are fucking cocksuckers, yeah. and you can't do anything about it. Well, you're on the internet, so I just yeah. feel so bad for them. It, it and that's it. I mean, we're putting ourselves out there, so yeah. we expect it. But those are just hate follows. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's oh, yeah. all it is. And we we've talked about this because I talked to um, Shade Tree, I talked to John Maxwell, Harley Tech, I talked to Blockhead. Like we when we went down there for Flim. Like, we were starting to get a little bit of stuff happening, and we was getting a little bit of this, and right at the beginning, for sure, and I'm really soft-skinned. Like, I'm, and she's a lot harder than I am. Yeah, it feels like it's leather, but down deep inside. <laughs> so, they were like, dude, you're just going to have to deal with it. This shit's coming for you. Yeah. You know, get ready. You know, and it does, and it's happening. It is happening. Um, just piles. It, no, it just it's an exponential growth. Yeah. <laughs> and and we, we talked about this when y'all were up there, yeah. you know, when we were riding around, yep. you know, how do you deal with negativity? You know, do you, so. So we actually came up with a, um, it's called DB. I'm going to DB your ass. I'm going to delete your comment and block you. <laughs> yeah. So we delete the comment and block them. Yep. So it's a DB. We just, yeah. we, you know, we just, I think we're just taking it in, in, in um, Blockhead told me this he says i have a no tolerance policy when it comes to my negativity on his channel yeah which he he gets tons of shit all the time and i talk to him a lot you know and he's the dudes have been solid with me talking to me and so has john well harley tech um they've helped us out a lot yeah they're good guys out there oh man and that's just it you know there's so much more good and bad out there but man those haters are it, just strong. Oh, they're real. always so strong. And, and I'm like you. I'm very soft-skinned. So I know we talked about this in Arkansas, but I don't read my comments before noon because I'm so – I can read up 200 positive comments and then one slightly negative. That's the only one I'm going to remember for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, yeah. I remember you guys talking about that, and I think that's a great yeah. policy, which I think somebody needs to adopt. <laughs> I'll, I'll look at views. I'll look up subscribers. I'll do all the, the regular analytic stuff whenever I want. But comments, yeah. I do not open that tab until at least after, like, 11 or 12. Well, yeah, you we know, had, we, Go ahead, baby. Sorry. We had one comment. I just told you about the other day and he will not stop talking about it I should have never even told him but it's not even that negative yeah you You know it doesn't have to be it It really doesn't have to be iron butt challenge (laughs) that we did and I mean we did we're not huge on like proven that we can do that no it was just a new bike we thought it'd be really cool the first time we set on it we're gonna do iron butt yeah we did it we showed it off and she made a cool video she's liking the video guys I don't know how to do this shit yeah she (laughs) does it also this dude's like a thousand miles in 24 hours that's child's play <laughs> try 1500 in 24 do. hours 32 times yeah no one gives a flying fuck well, and, oh. the th- and the thing of it is is like cool where's your video because i want to watch yeah I mean, exactly it, you, i'm gonna make him a certificate <laughs> so, nice. so douchebag th- rider of the day <laughs> yeah so this is this is what i do i just don't i don't once we she makes a video she sends it over to me and i look at it and we may make some changes in there because you know i may be like eh. but after that i watch that i never watch one yeah. of our videos again i remember you telling us yeah. that that blew my mind i just don't uh so i, I watch his videos multiple times oh yeah. i do his yeah, yeah. absolutely i love yeah. going back and watch my videos like especially yeah. since i've been doing it for so long it's it's like a video diary i'll like, go I back and go watch back. from like well i just watch the uh Oh, the, the Texas Moto Meet when we first met. Oh, wow. The first Moto Meet. Yeah, yeah. The first one. I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's I love cool. it. And that's and that's, that's when cool. people ask me what my favorite part about it is, it's that. it's I'm enjoying it a lot now, but 
the people who are going to get to enjoy it in the future, like my kids, my grandkids. I love that. Yeah. That's, Solid. I mean, that's something that us as a generation don't have. Oh, We've got shitty black and white photos. Oh, You're going to get to see how, you know, grandpa and grandma acted, how they met, what they did when they were young. Like, oh, imagine my, that. Yeah, my son already crazy. thinks it's the coolest shit ever. My yeah. son's 11. What the hell, man? Our kids don't give a shit. And, and my son, my son thinks he's just... You know YouTuber? Yeah. Like, that's the coolest thing ever. My niece is the exact same way. Oh, you're on YouTube too? I love oh, that. Yeah. My niece was actually getting bullied at school, so I made a video with her and gave her, like, a like a private shareable link. That way she could send it to everyone bullying and say, like, because they thought that, they, that she was lying, that there's no way you know this guy. So, like, wow. I did a video with her in my garage showing the bikes and, like, showing all the, you know, the fan mail and stuff like that so she could that's take it back. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so... And that's, that's how you can turn something negative to a positive. And that's use that's it, yeah. it because there again, you can't get more selfish. No. Yeah. Because it makes you feel oh, yeah. so good. So I was going to ask you guys, which, you know, you all asked us what's our purpose on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So what's y'all's purpose on YouTube? Mine uh, is to show the general public that not all Harley riders are assholes. That's my, I'm trying to break the Harley stereotype. Even if I change one person's view on Harley riders, I did my job. I love yeah. it. I totally agree with that. Yeah, Theirs is cool. probably different, but I don't know. That's my channels, at least. Yeah. Yeah. For us, so our the between two wheels television is this. It's so people who don't necessarily want to listen to podcasts, but they like YouTube, they can actually see it, and it's kind of the behind the scenes, and it's not just our voices. Yeah. Um, but the the purpose of the podcast is really letting people kind of to Justin's point, letting them see that we have young, young people. We have the younger people who enjoy cruisers, who enjoy baggers, who just go out and ride. And the whole, the whole thing is we don't care what type of bike you ride. We don't give a shit what brand you ride. Just get the fuck out there and ride. As long as it's not a slingshot. Well, that's, that's not a motorcycle. A motorcycle. So, but, yeah. so that's, that's our purpose is, one, we want to get more people on motorcycles. Mm -hmm. We want them to, one, learn how to fucking drive. And if they're on a motorcycle, they are going to be a better driver. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And two, understand the feeling like you just talking about, the whole freedom and just going out there and experiencing. Because when you're in a car, you don't get to smell you know that the air around you you, you know sometimes it's not good get sprayed by skunks yeah but uh but you see more things i think on a motorcycle for sure than oh. you do when you're driving a car oh, yeah absolutely yeah yeah. Totally changes your perspective on yeah. and what you're doing. We've all heard the horror stories of, you know, people going in looking for their first bike and they have a bad experience with a Harley dealer or another Harley rider and it totally turns them off. It only takes one person, one experience to turn them off from half of motorcycling forever. Oh, yeah. So it we're definitely fighting an uphill battle. But like I said, if we change one person's mind, we did a yeah. we did something. Well, <laughs> yeah. it here's I was hoping we would get to the point where we are today. Uh, you know, we just recently crossed over 31,000 downloads for the podcast. And we're doing something that people enjoy. And I get emails daily from fans. You know, one guy hit me up this week. He doesn't own a motorcycle, but he enjoys our podcast because it's not just, you know, we're Harley Davidson douchebags, and that's the only thing we care about. We ride Harleys, but we enjoy motorcycling as yeah. a sport. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So for us, he's he was asking some questions. I was giving him some tips on you know how to get the best deal for a motorcycle and financing and these other things, and he was happy. You know, he he watches Justin's channel. He's looking at getting a Fat Bob One Fourteen, all these things, and. That's what I'm looking for. Everyone who sends me shit emails, like, oh, you guys are fucking horrible. I was like, but you listened. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and thanks for the download anyways. And I'll, I'll tell you, Ken and I are the worst fucking people to throw hate at. Oh, oh yeah. Because we have no... They're literally the opposite of Blockhead's comment section. Oh, I know. Yeah. Like, we were talking to... You know, when y'all were up to an Arkansas, y'all were talking to him. I was like, oh, oh yeah. Jesus. It's a comment hit squad right yeah. there. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Fuck, yeah. fuck around and find out. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. got no shame in my game. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
But it's funny because when we were in Arkansas, when we had the Denny's meet and greet, that was the first time it was kind of a landmark. I don't even know if I told you guys this. One of the guys that was there came up and said, yeah, I was listening to the podcast and they brought your channel up and I checked it out and I've binge watched it for the last seven days. So he didn't find this podcast through me. It was the other way around. That was the first time it ever happened. I was like, that is awesome. I love that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And again, we have actually shockingly a lot of sport back riders who listen to our podcast. Yeah. And people who are looking to convert from a crotch rocket into a cruiser style. And they, they'll ask questions. Is a Harley the right bike for me? I was like, is it? You tell me. Yeah. If you, if you're currently riding a CBR 1000, you have to understand the shift Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and just being able to provide insight. You know, I've been riding over half my life and I've ridden sport bikes and cruisers and yes, I am a Harley fanboy. But, but we, the fact that you can say that says something. Yeah. We talk more shit about Harley Davidson than any other brand yeah. because we hold them to a higher standard. They're going to charge us $27,000 for a fucking motorcycle. You better be the best damn motorcycle out there. Yeah. And when they aren't and they aren't, we, we've oh, clarified this. We did a whole episode on that. Yeah. yeah. We give them shit for it. Mm-hmm. This is why Harley Davidson will never sponsor oh, this no. channel because we're too mean to yeah, it. We don't drink the Kool-Aid, for, and that's for anything. And oh, I, yeah. I, I used to work for Harley Davidson. So, yeah. See, like, you, you can't <laughs> buy me. I mean, th- yeah, there's obviously there's always a number there that buys someone. But, like, tobacco motorcycle wear, they're fucking $400 riding jeans. What the fuck are you talking about <laughs> those kevlar jeans yeah. so that the guy gets dragged behind I, the motorcycle i'll tell you what you send me a pair and i might wear them but but yeah. i'm but I, you're not gonna buy my review for it yeah yeah i've, I've even i've even shown yeah. people emails when they say like oh just another fucking youtube sellout oh, i'll, I'll say like hey know. what's your email and they'll put their email in the comments i will forward them the email i had with that company showing in the very last message i said i agree to all your terms but i need you to understand if i don't like this product i'm going to tell people yeah no doubt and um, if they say no well, yeah. like everything that's on our bike, um, I have met them in person yeah. where I've called them and talked to them directly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's somebody that I could hold a converse, conversation with and I get along with. Yep. And their product's good. Yep. Yeah. Or I just stop talking about them in a way because you don't really know until you try it out. Yeah. But yeah. our bike is Walmart. Not that we like Walmart, but for example, or Home Depot or whatever, we're got different products on that bike and we're trying we actually put it to the work we work this shit oh yeah Yeah. um and some of it just hasn't worked out but if i talk about it, it's because i like it and and like on our bike we have lights from custom dynamics and we have lights from kerry Hawkin. we're not sponsored by any of them they've said run this stuff and see what you think so we're splitting hairs sometimes yeah. so oh, absolutely a lot of people if you think we're being you know swayed one way or the other with money it's not yeah um it's kind of the opposite because we could get them pissed off at us because oh, yeah. we're running these different things but the what we're running i enjoy yep. yeah yeah absolutely well, i mean it. like when, like with his stuff when he gets sent a product there's been a couple things that you've got and you're like i'm not even gonna fucking make a video about this no this is garbage yeah yeah I know, and that's... I also like companies, kind of to your point, I like companies that will reach out, and then if you rebuttal, like say like, hey, I appreciate the offer, but I'm running these people because I've tested your products in the past, and I like this more. And they say, completely understand, thanks for taking my email. Like, I can respect the shit out of that. Yeah, and then some of them will say, well, do you have any thoughts? Yeah. Hell yeah, I've got some thoughts. Do you oh, got yeah. time? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you what I'm get thinking. It, get yeah. out that pen and paper. Exactly. Yeah, and 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 that's kind of what we're doing right now. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, we do have to make money somewhere or another. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I keep doing this stuff. Uh, we are not sponsored, clearly. I don't even know how the hell we're doing what we're doing. I mean, we all we're always running on fumes. It's the hustle, always, man. It's, it's the a hustle. Constant, yeah, grind it out. Yeah. You know, but it's something that we love. So yeah. if we're doing this and showing it off, it's it's because we're loving it. And yeah. uh, same with the products and anything that we do, it's uh, we're standing behind it because we like it, and we we're going to continue to do that. And like we say, we're going to do what the fuck we want to do anyway. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of sponsors, let's. Yeah. Uh, 
take a little ad break from Brush Hero. If you prefer washing your own bike and car, Brush Hero is the ultimate DIY detailing tool for you. 100% water powered, all you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride. With the various interchangeable brush heads, you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine, your rims, and anywhere else road gripe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order back <laughs> and we're gonna roll into our infamous because i was gonna say famous but shade tree shit all I over sh it shut it down quick yeah so the infamous lightning round so these three questions we ask all of our interviewees and there is no wrong answer so if money didn't matter what bike would you own and why 1977 shovel it would be a um rigid frame and it would be the color of the prettiest sky you've ever seen <laughs> how gay is that Man, that's but, the most specific answer we've ever gotten no, I love see, it. so he said he said prettiest sky you've ever seen and i and immediately i didn't think of a blue sky i thought of like thunderstorms rolling in like that gray oh, we'll see. that grayish Up blue interpretation there you go yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. and um we'd uh i that that would be it yeah without a doubt that's what i'd have okay yeah. so why uh, I was born in 77. Okay. <laughs> and, he's uh, really original. That's why he's called the original one. Uh, actually, I'm called the ordinary, <laughs> ordinary one. Sorry, ordinary. the ordinary. Um, Same difference. Can we just talk about shade tree? It's so much easier. <laughs> the obligated one. <laughs> the obligated. Um, yeah, so I was born in 77. I've never had a shovel, and I love hardtails. Um, my favorite color is blue and um, she would look badass on the back of it because we'd have a king and queen seat. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what I'd have. Okay. <laughs> what would you have? The same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I can sit on the back of. <laughs> as long as it had a, you know, what? at least a little pee pad. Well, we actually rode um, the hard House. tail for a long time. With I mean, I rode on the fender there for Oh my God. We still got that on wow. back, you know, it's an Evo and we rode, uh, actually it's in Adam's video, that first video that we did there at uh, Beaver, across mm -hmm. the, uh, that, that's Maxwell House. Yeah, and actually the seat that I have now is actually, was part of a backrest, we found out at some old bike. Yeah, shop. it was a Harley Davidson backrest. Uh, yeah, off so of it was a, like the piece, the backrest piece. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. we just, and everything that I built was just out of shit that we had laying around, that's how we've always done stuff. So, yeah, that's – so I've, we really got off on that fucking question. So. <laughs> it happens. Anyway. No, that's the purpose of it. Yeah. 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 The lightning round, it's the slowest bolt of lightning you you've ever yeah. seen. <laughs> got me right in the butthole, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like we already know the answer to this question, but number two is what is your favorite area to ride and why? Gotta be a hard question when you live in fucking Harrison, Arkansas. I know, right? <laughs> oh man, my favorite area to ride. Uh, fucking spoiled ass over there. A one A. Oh would, okay. Oh yeah, A one A was really. It was, it was really, really emotional cool. for you. So this gets complicated for me because it uh, where we ride these places also has uh, emotional connections to yeah. us. So mm -hmm. when I'm thinking of these places, God, I'm so. Suck it, Shade Tree, if he listens. It, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so these emotions are tied to these uh, memories, too, because I broke down um, when we were, um, oh, man, I'm trying to think exactly. Uh, the, I don't know. The hardest breakdown you break that down I have. A lot. Yeah, I cry a lot. But the, the wow. one of the, the video <laughs> that I you threw, did. threw him under that bus. Got no quick. Kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I swear, every video we've posted, you cry. Yeah, the video that you did when we were going to Sturgis, though, we were going across, and it was just I just voiced over a bunch of pictures. Oh, the rolling. Badlands. Thank you. I oh, the Badlands. Badlands. The so Badlands. I broke. Thank you. I went blank. So the Badlands, I had emotional connection to that place and the moment the temperature the smells the feeling of the bike the uh song that came on it was george Strait. um it was just all these oh all these things just came together and and the road there was no one on the road and she steph had got some really great pictures of me and we would flip through those as we stopped at this little 
shithole on the side of the road and we got a, a Bud Light and an orange. I, I don't know. Right. So, it was a gas station. Random. <laughs> little, yeah, it was so random, but the orange was great and the Bud Light was great. And this, it just set the feeling. Mm-hmm. Like, and then she's like, I'm going to get some pictures. I'm like, all right. And she told me what to do because she poses me in these pictures, right? Because we want to get the best, you yeah. know? So we looked at these and I was like, oh, man, this is really badass. And we got down the road and, and, and then I was thinking about those pictures and how hard she worked to stage these uh, pictures mm-hmm. and how emotionally evolved we are in this trip. And, and it was the first time we'd been to Sturges and it was our first um, – big road trip that that we did two people two wheels two events on two gram for two weeks and we just came from fuel cleveland for the fuel cleveland show Mm -hmm. um we just busted across through there i was wore out i was tired i needed sleep we were dirty i don't think we showered in a couple days baby wipes (laughs) yeah it was just we were just getting real roadish Mm -hmm. and all this stuff just compiled so that moment i really broke down then for a1a whenever we were coming back from uh, uh biketoberfest last year we were just rolling up through there and yeah i, I could feel her break you know, so yeah told you he was gonna cry <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was well, a solid moment like i yeah. i i was like fuck i'm just cruising down this and it's the beach over here and i didn't have a moment yeah but i felt her have a moment and then we went to the otis city which was st augustine, saint augustine and we a buddy of us got hooked us up with a room there i uh, won't mention his last name scott and kelly they're, they're great people um they hooked us up with a room and he kind of followed us up there and then he went back and like we just had a good moment that day but i felt her i felt her break down and that bike if you ride it long enough it will break you it you can ride that bike until it makes you sane almost it doesn't it just makes you connect so she broke so those that two wasn't my actual official breaking <laughs> point right it was the next day yeah yeah it was yeah that was pretty rough that next day too uh, it was just an emotional ride uh we rode on over to New Orleans. It was her birthday. I surprised her that day after we shot off across there and, and ended up in New Orleans, and we stayed there. It was her birthday. And we stayed there for two nights, and we were coming back. And that actual day was like a Sunday or something, and that was her actual birthday. We had to get back. And it rained the whole way from New Orleans to Little Rock. Ooh. And it was Ooh. cold, and it was raining. It was her birthday. We had to stop at Little Rock. We She got us a motel. We got off the bike, and she goes, this is the worst fucking birthday I've ever had in my <laughs> life. And I was like, whoa. And I felt so bad about that. But that, And I just bawled and bawled and bawled for hours. I didn't know if I was going to. I didn't even know how to handle that moment. But, so, I mean, our goal was to drive, to ride to from. Brush. It's okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> our goal was to ride from New Orleans back home. But. Yeah, yeah. We, I didn't make it. Well, I mean, if you think about it, in life, you, you don't stop thinking, well, man, that was a, a great egg I had the other day, unless there's something there, yep. you know. The environment that you have, mm-hmm. it all comes together to create a moment. Yep. You know, that's why, we, like I said, you asked me, hey, what'd you have for breakfast? Like, Fuck if I know. Yep. yep. You know, but hey, tell me about, you know, your best or worst birthday. Yeah, yep. you'll remember. You know, you'll yeah. remember that for the rest of your life. And I told smells and yeah, I told Brad that on our way to, to Big Ben because we we had been riding for shit probably seven eight hours at that point. Mm. The sun had dropped. The temperature was forty degrees. Fuck. And we weren't. A lot of us were not prepared for that. A lot of us didn't have the gear for that kind of riding. And we still had another 75, 80 miles to go. And Brad, I could tell Brad was hitting that point of like, fuck, I don't even want to go on anymore. And I went up to him. I was like, dude. This next hour and a half is going to suck ass. But when you're 80 years old, you're going to remember this moment right now. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, can, I can still picture that road. Every single turn we did, I can still remember it. Yeah, absolutely. And you just got to keep in mind, you can do anything for an hour. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know? And then when that hour passes, you just think there's just one more yeah. hour. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but it is. It's um, like we're talking uh, on two wheels. Yeah. You will experience a lot of things that, if someone doesn't ride, you it's a calmer oh, and, sure. and they don't understand. No. Yeah. They they just they don't get it. No. Nope. Yeah. When I found out my son wasn't my son, that weekend I jetted off, got on the bike and just went north. 
And that's what calmed me down because, you know, as a guy, you're thinking, okay, what'd this chick do? And, you know, I'm, I'm armed. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'll just kill this bitch and get rid of her. No one will ever fucking know. I'll just say she ran off somewhere, but get on the bike and going. And I, I was gone 29 hours. Mm-hmm. And that's all it took. That, that yeah, calmed absolutely. me down. Absolutely. And you're, you, you know, I was on a soft, or I was on my road glide and just jammed out to music yep. and just cleared my thoughts. Yeah. And absolutely. that's, that's one of the reasons I love having my motorcycle yep. um, is just getting out there. I, I, I do enjoy group rides if it's the people I know. Yes. Yeah. You know, like these two, my wife. Uh, the OGs, we can go cruise, and it's it's almost like you're by yourself, but you're enjoying it with other people. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, yeah. I I enjoy that, and that's 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 the experience. You know, mm-hmm. you, I remember hitting Topeka, Kansas, and then I was like, "Wow, this is a fucking shithole." Topeka <laughs> turned around and came back. Yeah, yeah Kansas is. Um, it's Kansas. Yeah. It's yeah. a never ending. It's road Kansas. That yeah. is um, I fucking love how you answer that. We need to we need to reword that to, to get that kind of answer. Not as in like like not your favorite area, but what is your favorite ride? Tell yeah. us about one of those yeah. either those breakdown itself. moments or those Eureka moments of like where you reached a peak of some sort. Oh, you don't mean riding in Eureka because that's Correct. an amazing <laughs> moment. I mean it yeah. could be. Yeah, it, it could be, be. yeah. yeah. All right. So, so when you're riding, you know, we talked about the three things that you, you can't not have when you pack. But what's that one piece of gear that you can't live without? Hmm. <laughs> this is so bad. Well, see, this is kind of <laughs> nice, though, because you ride as a passenger. So, yeah. So, so like, you have your own answer that mm-hmm. we probably don't ever think about. That's true. And then... Oh, well, then that's easy. My phone. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. That could be it. Because then I have, I mean, I can't control the GPS Yeah. or the bike, but I can be a nuisance in your ear. Yeah. <laughs> Which so she's always. Like, no, turn here. Take me back. Well, the cool thing with her back there is that we change our minds so much and we'll be talking um, and we talk on sentence. Um which, you know, it's what, all right. what do y'all talk on? It's all right. One of these Cardo well, we're on Cardo now, but we uh, we were on the Cinna Master Race for a while, but right. things no. change. Yeah. yeah. It, and it does. So that's one thing, like, we have a shit ton of people saying, I just don't want someone in my ear yakking at me. Well, we yeah, just we don't. get that all the time. We, you, don't, you don't have to be. We don't. You have your own volume. Yeah. You know, and you have the <laughs> ability to hit power. Yeah. yeah. Some, and if you turn that volume on your way down. People can't hear you. People yeah. can hear you. Yeah, my battery went dead. Um, but um, <laughs> the thing of it is, though, I really like communication mm-hmm. uh, when we need it because we can. We're always coming up with something on the road because that's where you think. Yeah, and yeah. we can bounce these ideas off of each other. So I really like the communication part with Steph and I um, to be able to come up with these ideas and these crazy notions of like. You know what we're gonna do next where we want to go what we are to do where we want to eat um where we're staying um and just simple bullshit like what, what's going on with the kids not that that's bullshit but it, it just gets heavy yeah because we have to stay in communications and keep we've got five kids like i yeah. said so we have to stay in communications all the time because we're on the road sometimes for 10 11 12 hours at a time we're riding so we need to talk yeah so that's probably a Probably my gear that I yeah. Well, I like, I like to tell people is like it's no different than a road trip. Like when you take a road trip in a car with someone, you don't sit there and talk to them the whole time. Yeah, you listen to music and then you say, "Oh, you see that billboard back there," and you start talking, and then well, you talk for a few minutes, and then boom, you're just yeah. talking about that right before you walked in. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You we'll go for we we'll stop to get gas. We'll talk there a little bit. We'll get back on. So I'll be like what the fuck's this GPS? Is it wanting me to go left or right because it's doing its weird shit? You know? Oh, is it a Harley GPS? <laughs> no, it's on my phone. <laughs> Recalculating. Yeah. So, and actually we have the whim on our bike. Yeah. Which we've got to start using. I uh, haven't took the time. That's something else that we, we need to really work on is the whim and getting that all set up. 
which we're going to do that next week when a Denny's is going to help us with that. But like I said, we'll leave a gas station, talk about which direction or whatever we're going to do. We may not talk again for, yeah. you know. To the next gas stop? Who knows? Basically. Yeah. 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 Faux show, sure, man. All right. So wrapping up, we like to give you guys, the interviewees, an opportunity to do any shout outs or shameless plugs that y'all would like to do. So now's your time. Yeah, so without a doubt, it would be Rod the Ozarks, Explore Harrison, um, Custom Dynamics, uh, Kerry Hawkin, um, yeah, and then uh, Mustang. Uh, we're running that Mustang seat. Um, and uh, Castle Graphics. She did her graphics on her box, which I think it was killer. Yeah, it looks, looks, looks really, really good. good. Yeah, yeah, she did that. Uh, she's golden every time we get another bike because ours was stolen <laughs> yeah. or a different or helmet. a different helmet she's yeah quick to yeah. slap something on there but yeah, yeah you've named a lot of companies but we definitely have to say thanks and a shout out to our patreons and yeah, our individuals out too. there that yeah and just everybody that supports us online and all the positivity and uh uh i'm sure in um grim parts you know we we're talking about that toro i really dig that thing um it's um, I'm trying to, I'll probably leave somebody out. I'm Danny sure. Charlie Davidson? Without a doubt. Yeah, I was going to say, it feels like, you know, like <laughs> the you. Academy Awards. When it, like, I feel like I should have a paper here that I should thank where's everyone. The, yeah, where's like, the music and Anyone that we up. didn't think. Yeah, so Denny's Harley Davidson's done a solid for us. They're continuously working with us. We're always, uh, they do everything on my bike. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Kiriak is, is sending us some stuff. Uh, and then, uh, you know uh, custom dynamics is too and uh memphis shades they sent us some you know different uh, windshields mm-hmm. um so i just take it up to denny's and then we start messing around and it feels really good because i can kick back because i'm not real i just it's a new bike and i'm afraid to fuck something up sure honestly. it's possible you know, so you, so you don't like taking the motor completely apart in the first two months. I'm not, man. I'm that's <laughs> great shit, man. I'm just saying. So yeah, um, and then uh, I and of course we want to thank you guys for uh, letting us be a part of this right here. We I've been looking forward to this honestly. This was worth the trip down here. Uh, Rot Rally was really cool today and stuff, but this is this is where the good stuff is right here. Well, we do appreciate you coming on the show. Absolutely. And um, if listeners go to our show notes for this episode, this is episode 34, uh, all the links for everywhere you can find the honorary one. Did yeah. I say that right? Nailed it. The honorary <laughs> one. Um, I have his Facebook website, YouTube channel, and your Instagram. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone actually uses Twitter anymore other than President Trump. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just have these on here, yeah, that's fine. Um, but they're all in the show notes. So be sure to head over there, check those out, and uh, show some love to the honorary one and the honorary squall. Yes, yeah, she is. nailed it. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T W O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be dead, dude. I like, I like.